Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very first episode of my very own class and archetypes guide. Uh, this is a series I'm mainly doing for fun. Bear in mind, this is not anything, you know, min maxi in terms of giving my, uh, uh, you know, takes on each and every class. Uh, just bear in mind, of course, that I will be going uh, through each of these class in terms of the entire list of archetypes alongside the main class uh, as we will do in each and every level. And as time goes by, of course, we'll also be looking at the prestige classes as well. Note that um, there's also an adept class here. I'm going to talk about that one in another episode, actually. So, uh, for our first episode today, we are going to be going over the alchemist class and archetypes. Now, this is going to be a pretty long video, I'm not going to lie. So, uh, what I'm basically going to be doing is for the main class, I'm going to go over the specifics in terms of what the class itself can do, as well as, you know, any particular interesting bits that you might want to know about the class. Um, as And when we go down to the archetypes, just to kind of speed things along, I'll mainly be going over the differences specifically. So... Um, if I can remind myself to, I will make sure to have, uh, chapters, well, the timestamps, uh, put in the comments, comments, the video description, so that way you guys can find it. Um, I know there's a way to make chapters and videos, but I don't know if I'm at the point in my, uh, channel where I can do that yet, but that's not important. Uh, for now, let's take a look at the Alchemist, which is, for me... One of the most unique classes I've ever seen in any tabletop game that has any sort of uh, resemblance to Dungeons and Dragons 3.5. Um, very, very cool stuff. And also bear in mind for those who know that there's, uh, um, oh, I forget what the class is called, but the, uh, it's essentially they're an archetype. The, the alchemist is essentially an archetype for. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. Never mind that part. So to start with, the uh, base alchemist is essentially a class that can throw bombs at their enemies, uh, especially brood bombs with chemicals of sorts. Uh, basically one of the more unique classes in terms of fighting abilities. Uh, the alchemist is particularly fun in that it's one of the few, uh, very few classes outside of spellcasters that really specializes in splash damage, which can make it a very, very powerful member of the team, just as long as you know uh, how to use it. Uh, looking at this at a glance, has high fortitude and reflex, but low will save, so bear that in mind. Average base attack bonuses, including uh, throwing. Uh, they get uh, five hit points per level on average, which I believe is a D8, so which is, of course, at its first level. Uh, they get max... Uh, six spell levels max so they're mid caster uh their casting ability is intelligence and of course they memorize their spells they uh basically a wizard of sorts so to start with the alchemist has proficiencies in armor proficiency light armor as well as all simple weapons i thought they'll be using many simple weapons but the big thing about this class is of course their bomb feature in addition to magical extracts, alchemists are adept at swiftly mixing various volatile chemicals and infusing them with their magic reserves to create powerful bombs they can hurl at their enemies. They can use another number of bombs each day equal to their class level plus their intelligence modifier. They travel 30 feet and use the throw splash weapon special attack. They are considered weapons and can be selected using feats such as point blank shot and weapon focus. Um, one thing the uh, thing doesn't tell you uh, while we're on the point. Um, because it uses splash damage mainly and no real, and the attack is, uh, as such, it's basically damage that, uh, hits a group of enemies, while the primary target you hit does take the full damage and any enemies take a portion of damage, the, the throwing attack bombs don't really work with any, uh, damage feats that... Uh, focus on like single target damage such as the mythic feeds cleaving shot however because these are entirely elemental in nature in fact these uh things start with you basically have fire damage as a uh 
as your uh, first bomb ability, they do work with the Ascendant Element feat, which is really, really nice to have. Now, on a direct hit, it does inflict 1d6 points of fire damage, plus the additional damage equal to the Alchemist Intelligence modifier. Uh, it increases by 1d6 at every even, every odd numbered Alchemist level. Splash damage from an Alchemist bomb is always equal to the bomb's minimum damage. So, hitting the ter a direct target will, you know, inflict potentially the full amount of damage. But all other targets only get a little bit. Uh, enemies can make a reflex save for half damage against the DC, which is 10 plus the Alchemist level, plus the int Alchemist Intelligence modifier. So definitely stack up that Intelligence if you're planning on doing these. Now, I'm going to take another uh, video to go over these more in detail, especially since there are some that come from mods. But for one, you get the ability Focus Bombs, which you absolutely should take for sure. You can also throw an additional Bombs per day. I don't... Uh, they say you can take this one, this feat, multiple times per level. I don't know why you would uh, need this feat, honestly, if your intelligence is high enough. Uh, you also have alternative elements, as we talked about. There's acid. There's good divine damage. I don't know if that um, participates in Ascendant Element, but it's certainly useful for any enemies that might be resistant to weapons that are not good aligned. You can also get shock. And, of course, you can... Uh, Increase the number of bombs you can use in the day, which is, of course, a mythic feat. There's also some bombs that just completely uh, change the nature of the bomb itself. Breath weapon makes it a breath weapon. Why in the world you would do that, I have no idea. Uh, this one inflicts curses on their attributes. And this one <coughs> makes your enemies nauseated. And this one, in particular, uh, can dispel your enemy's effects, which, is, which can help make the alchemist a surprisingly useful... Uh, d uh, dedicated dispeller, which is really, really cool. In addition to this, you also get discoveries at every second level, at second level, and then every two levels thereafter, you make an incredible alchemical discovery, and there are a lot of them! Quite a few, in term especially in terms of the mods that were added. Um, some of these discoveries, of course, um, Inflict abilities that require saving throws, uh, the difficulty class being 10 plus how the Alchemist level plus the Alchemist Intelligence modifier. Not, no surprise there. Um, and then also, another bread and butter ability for the Alchemist is, of course, the Mutagen, which is really, really cool. The Mutagen uh, requires a standard action to drink. You get a plus two natural armor bonus and a plus four alchemical bonus to a selected ability score for 10 minutes. You can choose between one of these three. I would not be surprised if dexterity was the one most people chose since, you know, throwing your weapons is a ranged attack and that's the modifier it uses. However, you do have to be careful because for the plus four you get bonus you get, you also take a negative two penalty to things, to a real, uh, a related uh, mental ability. So if it's strength, it's intelligence, so don't ever pick that one. If it's dexterity, <laughs> it's wisdom, which is definitely a rough one for the, you know, alchemists to take since they use dexterity for their attacks. However, they have low uh, wisdom will saves already, and this can definitely hurt for sure. And of course, constitution applies penalty to charisma. And, of course, effects of mutagens do not stack, so you can only drink one at a time. And on that note, there's also a discovery that I thought I'd bring up for this one in particular. I'll take another video to go over the specifics on each discovery. There's cogni... 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 There, there's smart mutagen. Let's call that. <laughs> it's basically the exact same as mutagen, except... Uh, the effects are reversed. Basically, it gives you a bonus to your mental abilities in while applying a penalty to your physical abilities. So, if you jack up your intelligence, your strength drops. If you jack up your wisdom, dexterity, you get the idea. It also gives you the uh, same bonus to natural bonus to armor class, which is certainly really cool. I think out of all of these, 
This is one I like the most just because the intelligence beef you can get can really rack your damage up like crazy, which is very, very cool. In addition, alchemists also get three ranks of poison resistance. Uh, plus two bonus on all saving throws against poison. You get this the first one at uh, second level, and then the next two at the at fifth and eighth level, respectively. And then finally, you get poison immunity at tenth level, which basically erases the work all of these. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, I like the idea of, you know, abilities getting stronger as you level up, but man, why not just give us a point of immunity right from the get-go? Um, and then, of course, they also get the throw anything feat right from the get-go, which allows the alchemist to add their intelligence modifier damage done with any splash weapons, which likely includes alchemist fire and acid flasks just in case you run out of bombs for some reason in case you were using them too much and last but not least of course uh alchemists get the brew potion feat for free level up to three per and then finally you also get persistent mutagens which lasts for one hour per level instead of just 10 minutes and one more thing to note with the uh discoveries you can also get and i would highly recommend getting these if, in case you got them the gr uh, greater and grand versions of mutagens and cognatogens if you have them. Uh, greater is jack the armor class bonus to plus four. And you get to select multiple ability scores to give bonuses to. I'm sorry, you get a plus four natural armor bonus to armor class and a plus six alchemical bonus to one of your ability scores and plus four to another, with both of those taking a negative two penalty. And then last but not least, the grand one lets you get a plus six to your armor class, a plus eight alchemical bonus to one of your ability scores, and a plus six to the next one, and a plus four to the last one after that, with only the negative two penalty applied to your mental stats, which can make the alchemist nothing sort of absolutely frightening. Last but not least, of course, we have the capstone. Now, thanks to some mods, I also, uh, there's, uh, I believe it was the, it wasn't the toy box mod, I believe it was the tabletop tweaks, which allows you, in addition to your class's specific capstone, to also add in a few more generic ones, including Great Beast, and Perfect Body, Flawless Mind. Let me talk about those real quick. The Great Beast basically uh, gives a Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, and Wisdom scores to your Animal Companion if you have those, which a lot of classes I think can pick if they have uh, the pre requisite feats. And then of course, Perfect Body, Flawless Mind lets you increase your ability scores by a collective total of eight, and you can split those up any way you choose. For the uh, Alchemist specifically, you get a grand discovery, which lets you learn two normal discovery, but also learn a third, third discovery chosen from the list below, whatever the hell that list might be. I feel like this <laughs> capstone mod might have broken this one, so hopefully it still works. Um, I will see if there's a way I can uh, bring those back on, and if I can, I will make an update to the video. But in the meantime, would I play as this class? Honestly, yeah, I would. It's definitely a different one to get used to and you do have to be really really careful with the uh alchemist bombs because um outside of using mods to prevent it they do uh commit the great sin of friendly fire which really does kind of suck uh the bombs themselves don't have a huge radius i think it's like uh 10 feet at the most and you can't throw them a ways away you just have to be really really careful um with who you throw uh, the bombs at. So, bear that in mind. <clears throat> Aside from that, the Alchemist has really, really good abilities that can make them incredibly powerful. The Mutagens and Cognatogens, I think that's how it's pronounced, in particular, just make them all sorts of obstacles to good. I would say the one big weakness that Alchemists have is that, I is that their spells, which are considered, um, they go by another term in this game. Uh, yeah, it's their extracts. They usually, if not always, are personal range only. This one does allow you to use it on a friendly creature, though. Um, 
And you can get some really, really, really good abilities uh, out of these as well. Just bear in mind, though, that um, not all of them are going to be particularly good. I know Dragon Kind 1 is probably not going to be the greatest choice because there's better versions of that out there. But aside from that, they do have some really useful abilities. Just bear in mind, like I said, a lot of them are personal only. And so that can make the that can limit the uh, alchemist's overall utility. So bear that in mind if you're playing one. Next up, in terms of the archetypes, we have, and I'm not shitting you when I say this, this word right here is literally the French word for surgeon. I have absolutely no idea how to pronounce it. Uh, if anybody knows, feel free to let me know. But this is essentially a healing alchemist, which, primarily, which is a support class that primarily specializes in healing abilities. The big trade-off for this class, of course, is that they don't have any poison resistance or even immunity, which, honest to goodness, I think is a very minor loss. Um, after playing through the game, I haven't really got hit by poison all that much, you know. There are definitely moments where you do have to be careful with that. And even then, if you uh, have the right backup, you can keep your allies safe. So you don't have to worry too much about it. What they get instead are the Infused Curative, which allow a surgeon's extracts of remove disease, remove blindness, remove poison, neutralize poison, and cure spells, which automatically act as infusions and can be used not only on themselves, but on other people as well, which is really really awesome definitely worth having on this class for sure next up they also get skill focus lore religion which is uh i mean it's okay i guess i don't really take a lot of uh skill focus feats myself unless they feel they're really 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 necessary i will say though that um because it gets uh, skill focus or religion this can be a good alternative to some sort of divine caster uh, in terms of having someone be the sort of... Oh, the corruption reducer when you're resting. So that's a good call for sure. In addition, of course, and before I forget, there are... Uh, the class skills for the base alchemist are knowledge arcana, knowledge world, perception, lore, nature, trickery, and use magic device. So again, in terms of, you know, this being a skill focus... The only way you're going to really get an, uh, much use out of it is if you pick a background that allows you to have lore of religion as a uh, base, uh, as a class skill. And even then, it's not going to be particularly effective because alchemists don't make a lot of use out of wisdom, aside from all saving throws. And finally, Power Over Death, which adds Breath of Life to the formula book as a fourth level extract and his infused creative ability applies to this extract. The spell itself cures 5d8 points of damage plus 1 per caster level, maximum of 25. So, so unfortunately, um, for a caster level, maximum of 25. Unfortunately, um, I don't think a caster level in this game can go past 20, so I don't know if that makes any sense. But basically, it brings uh, recently sane creatures back to life within two rounds, of course. So it can definitely be very useful. Uh, provided, of course, they didn't get hit by Finger of Death or something like that. Uh, but those are the big differences between the the French surgeon and the alchemist. I'm, done. I'm not I'm even going to try to push that word. But in terms of would I use this class above the baseline alchemist, I... I'm going to say a hard no to this one, actually. Um, the Infused Curative Abilities is certainly very useful. Unfortunately, there are other ways that you can do this um, with other classes. I know uh, the Neutralized Poison itself has a communal uh, variant. And a lot of the Cure Spells, you know, there are mass Cure Spells that other uh, Divine classes can pick, so... I would say outside of big time role playing, or if you want to, you know, play as a healer that's different from the usual healers, I honestly personally would not pick this one over the Alchemist. Next up, uh, thanks to the creators of the Prestige Plus mod, we have an Alchemist ar archetype called the Construct Rider. And it just occurred to me 
I believe the uh, D&D 5th edition class I was talking about earlier is called the Artificer, which, of course, has its own uh, construct creating abilities. Uh, what this class is, is that it creates arcane devices to emulate and surpass weak flesh, or at least that's what the game makes it sound like. Uh, what it really is, is nothing more than an alchemist that comes with its own free mount. Basically, here's how it works. The craft mount ability is given to uh, the alchemist, which allows you to construct a uh, mount shaped like a riding animal, which probably means it looks exactly like the riding animal. Um, it does use the effective alchemist level as the effective cavalier level, which means you don't have to worry about, like, feats to boost up the levels, which is awesome. It is actually considered a construct in terms of its creature type, but it still has, uh, skills, feats, strength, dexterity, adjustments are the same as the regular mon uh, muscle. It does, however, have no constitution score, as it is just a construct, and instead gains bonus hit points appropriate for a construct of its size. It also has all the immunities of a construct, except for immunity to mind affecting effects since it has a mind, which... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna call bullshit on that one. Constructs, you see, don't have a mind of their own, dude. Their, uh, you know, ability to intelligently decide things is usually something put in, uh, by the creator. So, not a big fan of that, but whatever. I guess we don't want it to be too overpowered. Um, you do get two... How many choices? You, you just get to two choices. The horse and the wolf, which, yeah, makes the choice super duper easy, because we all know what the wolf can do. Moreover, you also have the Diminished Extracts, which is not a good thing. You may prepare one fewer extract of each level than no normal. If this reduces the number to zero, you may prepare extracts at level only if the intelligence allows bonus extracts of that level. To create a construct in mind and body that are constantly changing and improving, they must manufacture vast quantities of clockwork or animating reagents. As such, the construct writer can never gain new spells from a prestige class, which, I mean... That's only if you're really planning on using a prestige class that gives you spells, and even then, I mean, that's probably something I wouldn't worry about too much. Um, aside from that, the only other change is that the, the Construct Rider does get a bonus combat feat, which is really nice. Too bad they only get one, and they get that in place of one of their fourth level grant level discovery, which, I mean, it sucks in a way, but it's not a huge big deal. They do get to keep uh, their, all their bombs, though, so if nothing else, you get a bomb thrower that simply moves around the battlefield more and even has a tanky little companion. Um, would I recommend this one? Well, I, d I don't know, because unfortunately, they do have a very, very ginormous weakness, in fact, in that they don't get any automatic mutagens at all. They don't even get persistent mutagen, which sucks big time. Um, and unfortunately, because the regular mutagen is not listed along with, uh, the other mutagens in the, uh, discovery tab, I think at best you're only gonna get the cognatogens, which, you know, in all, in all fairness, still gives the class a lot to work with. You can still get, uh, crazy high intelligence. Um, but yeah, like I said, if I would, would I use this one? I honestly think I would. I would at least give it a try, you know? It is nice to know that you get a mount of your own that keeps up with your level, can be a wolf, and moreover has a lot of immunities since it's not even considered a beast, it's considered a construct, which is really, really nice. The lack of uh, mind-affecting immunity, which does kind of suck, but <clears throat> I've dealt with that before and it's not a huge loss. So yeah, I would say yes to this one as it's uh, really a cool idea. So thanks again to the creators of the Prestige Plus mod for putting this in. Next up, we have the Grenadier, which is a ma uh, alchemist class that specializes in the use of throwing grenades. And this one, as you can imagine, is pretty darn awesome. In addition to its uh, typical weapon proficiencies, it also gets, of all things, martial weapon proficiency with six different weapons. Now, why in the world you would get this when you've already got a throwing bombs, I have no idea, but it is... I think it's nice to have the, uh, you know, extra weapon proficiencies, because, I mean, as Grenadier, you're more than likely going to be throwing a lot more bombs than usual, which, of course, is certainly a nice thing to have. 
Unfortunately, you all, you lose the ability to brew potions for some weird reason, as the Construct Rider also lost. That's not a huge loss, but it just kind of sucks that you can't brew them. But, eh, whatever. Uh, moreover, they also gained the Alchemical Weapon ability. A Grenadier can use a weapon or piece of ammunition with a single arm of al harmful alchemical liquid or powder, such as an Ast, Flask, or Alchemist Flyer. This action consumes the alchemical items, but transfers the effect to the weapon in question which takes the full effect on the next creature struck by the weapon, but does not splash, spread, affect additional targets, or benefit from any other effect that specifically affects splash weapons, which unfortunately means that certain swarms might still retain immunity to it. Any extra damage added is not doubled on a critical hit, and the alchemical treatment causes no harm to the weapon treated and wears off one minute after being applied if no blow is struck. Infusing a new uh, alchemical item also removes the effect of any alchemical liquid previously applied. You can do it as a swift action at 6th level, as a uh, free action at 15th level. I'm gonna, um, now, in terms of how effective this is, I'm just going to say it's probably a backup ability at best. Uh, the bombs themselves can still do crazy amounts of damage. I mean, you get 10 ranks of it for crying out loud. That being said, though, it is kind of a nice thing to have um, in case you do run out of bombs and you need something like a hand crossbow or heavy repeating crossbow to help you with that. So it's it, it's a cool idea. If nothing else, it's a really cool roleplay feature, which is very cool. Uh, they do lose all their poison resistance and immunities, which neither here nor there. However, they do get the precise bomb ability, which doesn't affect allies upon throwing bombs. This is awesome! I mean, th there's no question, you know. When you're playing as a class that, you know, risks a lot of friendly fire, having something that just gets rid of it right from the get-go is so good to have. You don't get it until second level, which kind of sucks. But, I mean, you get second level pretty damn quickly, even without mobs in the game, so it's not a huge deal. At level 6, you get the Directed Blast ability, which allows a Grenadier to detonate a bomb so that it splashes any 30-foot cone rather than affecting an irradiate. And a radius. It starts at the alchemist and extends away from her in the direction she chooses, which basically means it's nothing more than a buffed up breath weapon. <laughs> However, each creature does uh, take damage if it suffered a direct hit from the alchemist bomb, though reflex saves and have damage, which makes this ability really, really powerful. And of course, at level 10, you get Staggering Blast, which can uh, make your bombs particularly overwhelming. Whenever a great Nadir scores a successful critical hit with a bomb, the creature directly struck by that bomb is staggered for 1d4 plus 1, which me which greatly limits what they can do, which can be very, very helpful. Uh, they have to use their fortitude save to reduce the damage to one round, which means it still happens no matter what, so this can be a really, really good controlling effect. So, would I use this archetype over the alchemist? Absolutely. freaking lutely I mean, <laughs> this is what archetypes should do. Take something that uh, alchemists is, at, at the base class is typically good at, strip away the, you know, extra features that they don't need, and really, really, really home in on uh, one of their base features. I mean, <clears throat> this is why the archer kit from Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 is one of my absolute favorite kits. And this just really, really helps make that more useful. You're, you're, you know, you won't harm your allies by accident, so you're much safer to use. And I imagine the directed blast also doesn't hurt your allies, which is very, very nice for sure. Next up, we have the incense synthesizer, <laughs> which is um <coughs> rather interesting. It's uh basically a support class that provides various buffs to your uh allies. It's, it's kind of like a bard of sorts, except instead of using songs, you use drugs. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But in all seriousness, though, it is a pretty uh, interesting uh, direction to take in your class. In fact, one of the abilities you gain with the uh, Incense Incisor is the Incense Fog, which is an ability to create Incense Fog in a 15-foot area around him to aid his allies, including himself, improving their combat abilities. The fact that ally receives a plus one alchemical bonus on attack and weapon damage rolls. The ability can be activated as a standard action and lasts for three plus half the alchemist level plus their intelligence modifier rounds per day. Now this is particularly awesome because it uses an alchemical bonus aside from like a bless spell or something like that which usually uses a more common morale or luck bonus. 
this is particularly powerful because you have to have uh, different sources for the bonuses for them to stack, which means the instant synthesizers uh, bog can really stack well with other classes and make your class much more powerful <clears throat> overall. Moreover, you also get various instances to use, which is awesome. You get one at fir third level and every three levels thereafter, which uh, can, you know, put forth some pretty darn powerful abilities. For one, there's the increased range, which increases the area to 30 feet around instant synthesizer, which is really helpful in case you're in one of those wide open areas. You can use, you can also use instances that hurt your enemies, such as the toxic instance, which uh, hits an enemy with negative two alchemical penalty. You can also get these up to three times with stacking effects, which can definitely be very helpful depending on what specifically they do, which for the improved instance, gives you an additional plus one to outcome almost and attack damage rolls. You can only take that one up to two times, but no doubt in my mind, that's a pretty uh, popular one for sure. Now on the negative side, you do lose your physical mutagen. So bear that in mind when you're making your discoveries. And also your bombs only gets about half as powerful as a typical alchemist does. So you're only going to get it like every four levels instead of every two, which kind of sucks. Not a humongous deal, though. That just means that that just, you know, adds to the instant synthesizer's role as a support character. And would I use it over the alchemist? Well, it just kind of depends. It's, this is more of a, you know, repurposed alchemist that's meant more for defense and support rather than offense. So this is more of a personal preference. Me, I actually don't really get bothered by the idea of my main character not hitting quite as hard as, you know, other characters. I know it's popular for people to have, like, you know, high damage dealer as the hero of the game, which is cool, but I've always kind of thought to myself, a support character can totally be a hero as well. Next up is another archetype added by the Prestige Plus mod, the Internal Alchemist, which studies medicine, diet, and all that other stuff that doctors do. So, <laughs> so, with this one, it gets uh, rather interesting. Unfortunately, we lose the throw anything fee, which means we can't add intelligence modifier to damage and splash weapons, which kind of sucks. Though I think you can still add that intelligence modifier to the bombs you have, which means the loss really isn't all that hard. You also can't brew your own potions. Oh no, what will I do? Guess I'll have to go to the store to buy some more. You do, however, in addition to poison resistance, get disease resistance, which, again, not something I found particularly common, though I will say disease resistance against those swarms that you have to deal with towards the beginning of the game is actually really nice. Finally, at level 6, you do gain the uncanny dodge ability, which means you can't be flat-footed, and you don't lose your dexterity bonus to armor class if the attacker is invisible. These, of course, are... You still loses it if you're immobilized, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, <clears throat> now, aside from all those changes, that's pretty much the only uh, stuff an internal alchemist really gets. I just took a moment to go over the discoveries to make sure there wasn't anything I was missing. So, all you really get with this class um, is a little bit of extra dodging and some disease immunity, which is... Nice, I guess, but would I choose it over the regular alchemist? No, it's not. It doesn't add a whole heck of a lot to the alchemist as a whole. It pretty much just feels like a regular old alchemist with a few extra bells and whistles. Um, well, actually, you know what? I lied. I actually probably would use this uh, internal alchemist over the regular alchemist with the extra abilities it does get. It probably just wouldn't be my first choice over other classes like the Incense Synthesizer or Grenadier, which I think have much, uh, add much more to the battlefield overall. Still, it's a nice choice idea. Um, what you, lo what you lose isn't particularly bad, and what you do gain can certainly be useful. I just don't think it's very game-changing. And our last addition from the Prestige. Plus mod is the Mad Scientist, which, you know, I'm honestly kind of surprised they didn't come up with these right from the get-go. Now, what's interesting about this class 
unlikely the others that were put in is that it is available in the tabletop version of the game and it functions pretty much uh precisely like what you would think it's uh got just about everything that the regular alchemist has with two very noticeable exceptions at level two instead of your first discovery you get what's known as mad genius at second level, a mad scientist can deal 1d3 points of wisdom damage to herself to create a genius extract as one of her daily first, second, third, fourth, or fifth level extracts, which are basically their spells. This otherwise takes the same amount of time and effort as creating a normal extract of its level, but instead of her choosing a formula she knows for it to grant, a genius extract has an unpredictable result. When the alchemist brews the, con the extract, she gives it a random effect from the list of alchemical formulae of one spell level higher the extract spell level so you basically get a chance at an extract higher level than what you can normally cast at the cost of basically behaving like a wild mage no thank you do not like not in my personal opinion and next up is the mad mutagen which lets you brew essentially a mutagen which they also get regular versions of uh in place of the normal one now, when you drink the Mad Mutagen, you can brew one more as if it has, if you have the leisure to, but you also take 1d4 points of wisdom damage, which takes one hour to brew a dose of Mad Mutagen. Which basically, from what I can tell, this allows you to just make the decision on the fly, which tells me this is something that acts faster than the regular Mutagen. It doesn't really explain very well, and I kind of wish they would have gone into more detail in terms of the game. But yeah, it's, it's basically more unpredictability. Would I use this over the base alchemist? Fuck no. <laughs> it's a cool idea, don't get me wrong. And, I mean, unpredictability, it's, it's just something I don't like. I mean, I hate wild mages and classes like that. I wouldn't even play as a wild sorcerer in a 5th edition game. I just don't like the idea of accidentally fireballing my entire party just because I had a unlucky roll of the dice and i just feel like this doesn't add very much so yeah kind of a hard pass on this one next up is the metamorph which is essentially eschews all of your bomb throwing abilities and even the throwing ability in exchange for things like physiology and transformations which allow you to uh take on beast shapes and other sort of things, which is, it's cool, I guess. I mean, if you want to, I mean, if I wanted this ability that badly, I'd be a druid. But let's go over what you lose. First off, you lose all 10 of your bombs. Next up, you also lose a throw anything feat. Why have that feat if you can't throw a bomb at all? You can still brew potions, though, which is odd, but whatever. However, you do also get to add stealth to your list of class skills. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying uh, stealth isn't a useful ability. I just find it odd that they would put it on a shape-shifting class, notably one that can turn into a rather large-ass dragon. But in addition to this, you also get adaptive physiology, which gives you a 25% chance to negate critical hits and persistent damage. Similar to the Preserve Organs Discovery, so you get that automatically, which is nice. Uh, Jack's up to 50% at 6th, and 75% at 18th? Ugh, no way. Should have done 75% at 12th, and then 100% at 18th, but that's just me. You also get the Shape Changer ability, which allows a Metamorph to gain the ability to transform herself to another form. Lasts for 1 hour per Metamorph's Alchemist level, or until it's changed back. Changing form is a standard action that does not provoke an attack opportunity, and a Metamorph... The metamorph is fatigued for one round each time she changes state. It can use ability twice per day at fourth, an additional day, additional time every uh, two alchemist levels thereafter for a total ten times at twentieth level. As such, this makes this uh, class that's a little bit more difficult to uh, multi-class from because you get such a strong ability at level two, or at level twenty. But anyway, the ability functions as B shape one at fourth, B shape two at ninth, B shape three at eleventh. B shape 4 or dragon kind 1 at 13th. Oh, you get a, cho uh, you get a choice. That's kind of cool. And dragon kind 2 at 15th. Yes, it um, replaces a lot of stuff, unfortunately. And it says also right here that in it uh, replaces extracts and mutagens and such. I don't know what the heck that's supposed to mean. 
you do get all your extracts as you would in the base game, and you can even use mutagens as well, so I don't quite get that. Um, what I have heard about um, shape change in this game is that it's not particularly strong, and while considering you don't even get Dragon Kind 3 or 4, I can totally understand that. Um, Dragon Kind 2 isn't too terrible because the dragon form you get isn't, part, you know, overwhelmingly big to the point where it makes it hard to navigate certain dungeons. But aside from that, I mean, I don't know. It's not a terrible choice, I would say, if you really wanted to shape change all that much. But I think there are better shape changers out there. And I've even heard that shape changing itself is a, not a particularly strong ability in this game. <laughs> in fact, from what I've heard, there's an arcanist uh, archetype that does shape changing stuff way better. So would I pick this over the base alchemist? No, not in particular. I don't really do shape changing class as much myself. I'm not normally one to do uh, to main a uh, melee character anyway. And as I said, there are better options. Next up, we have the mind chem chemist, which Next up, we have the Mind Chemist uh, archetype, which comes to us from the Expanded Content 2022 mod. Uh, quick note about that. I know it says 2022, but it uh, it is getting consistently updated to the latest version of the game. So don't get thrown off by that name, just in case you get worried about it. While the most alchemists use their mutagens to boost their physical ability at the cost of mental, some use alchemy for the opposite purpose to boost the power of the mind and memory. Which is an odd thing to read because regular alchemists do have the mental ones as an optional mutagen if they want to take it. So, whatever. The big difference between uh, this mind chemist and a regular alchemist is that they lose the base mutagen ability, but instead gain the cognatogen ability as a base ability, which, you know, it, it's kind of cool. I actually do kind of like this because it gives the mind chemist a huge advantage in terms of having uh, extra intelligence damage for their bombs right from the get-go, which, by the way, they do retain all of them. Uh, but yeah, the basic mutagen, they do lose, and I don't know if they, like I said, the basic mutagen is not uh, included in the discovery. You just have the greater and grand, which of course have prerequisites. So it's likely you won't get to use regular mutagens at all, which in terms of your dexterity boost can be a bit of a hit. You do, however, get a skill discovery, which allows you to select skill focus in any knowledge skill, lore of religion, persuasion, trickery, stealth, or use magic device in place of discovery, which can be very useful if you want to uh, have a skill monkey out of this class, which that's certainly a viable option. I, again, don't typically pick skill focuses, and I personally find it only really useful to pick select uh, skill focuses if you can find, get a hold of the background that makes them a class skill. This is Mind Chemist Mutagen Resource Backup, which is likely something that's only listed on the class in terms of, you know, making sure the mod works properly. So that's pretty much all that is. And then one more feature the Alchemist gets is Perfect Recall. At second level, a Mind Chemist has owned his memory. When making a knowledge check, he may add his intelligence bonus on the check a second time. Thus, a Mind Chemist with 5 ranks in Knowledge World and a plus 2 Intelligence has a total skill bonus of plus 9. 5 plus 2 plus 2. This is particularly useful when using that skill to, you know, grab the extra little bit of experience points when, you know, making a Knowledge check, which is actually really cool. I kind of like that, actually. It does say Intelligence bonus on the check a second time, which likely means it only works with, uh... Uh, yeah, knowledge checks. Basically, knowledge checks uh, any check that uh, relies on intelligence. So, now I do kind of wonder if you're able to change. There are backgrounds that allow you to change the source, the ability source of a skill check to an intelligence check. So, I kind of wonder if those would be applied to perfect recall as well. It would be very, very cool if they did. I don't know if they will because it's pretty specific on the 
it being a knowledge check, so we'll have to check that for sure. In any case, would I choose this over the regular alchemist? Honestly, I would. Again, you do lose out on a physical mutagen, which kind of sucks because, you know, you have it, it puts a little bit more pressure on your um, dexterity ability to throw stuff. However, having cognatogen for your intelligence right from the get-go is very, very useful in my opinion and can really, really help you um, add that much more, you know, intelligence damage to your bomb. So I would say overall, this is definitely a win for me. The loss of poison resistance, again, not the biggest deal. And next up, of course, we have the Preservationist, an alchemist who keeps preserved specimens in bottles and releases them to aid him in battle. Essentially, an alchemist with Summon Nature's ally. And if you guys know anything about summoning spells in this game, it's that they suck. And the reason, only reason they suck now is because they were apparently very awesome in Kingmaker, which makes me very sad because I love the classes that allow me to summon allies for help. Uh, it just kind of sucks. It, it really, really, really does. Um, they do lose poison resistance, which isn't a huge loss. However, they also use lose persistent mutagen, which is a fairly big loss if you rely on those a lot. And you also do lose one discovery, though. You lose that level 18, which... It isn't a humongous deal in a grand scheme of things. I'd rather lose things, repeatability like this towards the end of the class rather than from the start. That way you don't take such a huge hit right from the start, uh, start of the game. In any case, you get a uh, bottled ally, which is some of nature's ally. You get rank 1 at level 2, rank 2 at level 5, rank 4 at level 8, rank 5 at level 10, Rank 7 at level 14, and rank 9 at level 18. So aside from having some handy-dandy uh, distractions. <laughs> and of course, if, since this is primarily a summoning class, you'll definitely want to get a hold of some feats that allow you to beef up those summons, which naturally will eat up any more useful feats you have. So this can be a pretty risky class to take. Um, in my opinion, I would not take this over the regular alchemist just because there are summoning based classes that are so much better not only because they give you plenty of summoning uh summoning spell options but also because they usually get uh feats that boost your summons automatically so this is one i honestly would not recommend next up we have the reanimator which if i remember correctly was actually added in as um an alchemist from the latest dlc a reanimator is an alchemist who has discovered how to infuse a corpse with a semblance of life. So, in terms of thematics, I already love this class because it's essentially an alchemical necromancer. And I love necromancers. So, in terms of its differences, to start off with, we have corpse studying. Whenever a reanimator kills an enemy, they gain a plus one alchemical bonus on attack and weapon damage rolls until the end of combat. These bonuses increase by plus one at 5th level and every 6th level thereafter to a maximum of 4th 17th level. A reanimator's bombs deal damage one die category lower than normal, which sucks, unfortunately, which means uh, the base damage for all alchemists is 1d6, so I believe it would go down to 1d4, which can unfortunately make alchemists a little bit weaker in terms of killing their enemies. Uh, <clears throat> so... Unsurprisingly, this means you're going to want to try and finish off enemies as best as you can with the alchemist, uh, with the reanimator alchemist, and also make sure your intelligence is as high as possible to offset the two point deficit you do get from the lowered bomb power. Moreover, you also lose three of your bomb ranks, so you can only go up to 70 10 at most. You lose them at levels uh, five. 11 and 15. However, you do get three abilities in place of these. At level 5, you get Simple Reanimation, which lets you add Lesser Animate Dead to the formula book as a second level extract. In addition, each undead creature raised by the area animator gains a plus 4 alchemical bonus to strength and charisma ability scores for the duration of the spell that raise it. I don't know exactly what Lesser Animate means. I don't know if that and uh, undead will uh, actually be weaker than what Animate Dead has. I honestly... Well, let me see here. Uh, enemy dead lesser. 1d3 plus 1 undead skeletal champions. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't know if it's any weaker than the actual enemy dead spell. But what is awesome, though, is the 
plus four alchemical bonus to strength and charisma ability scores they get. Note, of course, that undead have no constitution scores, so they use charisma in place of constitution, so bear that in mind. And since the bonus is alchemical, any other attribute boosts you can give to these uh, undead allies will likely pair up with it, which is really, really cool to have. You also get improved reanimation at level at 11th level, which allows you to add Create Undead to a formula book as a 4th level extract. You also get a plus 6 alchemical bonuses to your summons strength and charisma ability, which is very, very nice for sure. You can uh, <clears throat> get a Grave Knight or Guardian Armor, which is awesome. And last but not least, at level 15, you get Create Greater Undead as a 5th level extract, and they can make one extra attack per round. Holy shit. Summons that are actually halfway useful. You can get Devourer or an Advanced Greater Shadow, which is very, very nice to have. I believe Shadows are known for lowering ability scores, which would be a cool thing to have. <laughs> now, I don't know if this makes these uh, summons actually viable, and I wouldn't be surprised if you... I don't even know if those... Uh, summon boost those attribute boosting feats for your summons would apply to these i would think that they would but in any case this is a nice uh class to have for sure and all you really lose out of the mix is three bombs which can make your overall damage dealing ability uh, a little bit weaker um <clears throat> so would i pick this over the alchemist possibly again i'm kind of iffy about you know undead being a thing i will say though that this would actually be a good class for the Lich um, Mythic Path, just because of the fact that, you know, you'll eventually become undead yourself, and anything you can do to, you know, raise the health of uh, your undead enemies is really, really cool. In fact, uh, a Divine Caster that has access to uh, channeling, particularly if they're an evil uh, cleric, that can use their channel to heal the undead can use these to heal your own summons if you so choose <laughs> and having selective channel will ensure that any enemy undead don't get healed by accident it's 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 a nice class it's definitely an interesting choice for sure the one i would definitely pick out for sure if only for the thematics i don't know how much more useful the undead can be over your own bombs though so that's just something that'll require some experimentation i can say for certain between the boosts you get and the summons you have, I would definitely pick this one over the Preservationist, for sure. And last but not least, without a surprise of any sort, everyone's number one favorite alchemist, the Vivisectionist, which studies bodies to better understand their functions. However, unlike a Chirurgeon, which wants to heal, these guys just plain kill, and holy crap, they can kill. The only class I know of in Pathfinder that has a sneak attack progression rate equal to that of the basic rogue. And let me just say, when you add mutagens to the mix, it gets downright frighteningly scary. They can't throw any bombs, but this is one of the few uh, instances where losing bombs in favor of sneak attacks is actually a bonus because of how powerful sneak attacks it gets. I mean, I've been using the <laughs> Shadow Shaman to get sneak attacks and you know when they land oh my god they freaking land and they are so much fun to use for sure <clears throat> you also of course get uh various abilities you can add to your sneak attacks and then in addition to this you can also get medical discoveries which basically i mean they're essentially regular discoveries however they do have a few uh other choices for one you can get a bleeding attack instead which is very, very useful. Aside from that, though, there's not much else uh, to the vivisectionist, but I would definitely say, after seeing how easy it is to get uh, sneak attacks, even with a ranged character, I would absolutely pick this one over the regular alchemist. In fact, I'm sure there are a lot of people that will say this is an unfair, viable class for sure, just because not only because of the damage it can do, but because of mutagens that you can get, and picking the right feats can just absolutely cause the damage uh other damage you can do with sneak attacks to just plain skyrocket like hit very scary high damage definitely a good class pick for sure 
The only thing I hate about the vivisections, though, is that they don't get stealth as a class skill, which would be really nice. Granted, I've heard stealth isn't really the greatest skill in this game. It doesn't really function as well as it should. But hey, you know, anything to get you some extra sneak attacks. And one thing about it, there's plenty of other ways you can get sneak attacks in the game. There are surprise rounds, catch them flat-footed, the usual flanking arrangements, that sort of thing. So yeah, a vivisectionist, unsurprisingly, definitely one of the best alchemists out there. And it's kind of hilarious that one of the most highly praised alchemists is one that cannot throw any bombs at all. <laughs> they do get to throw anything feet, though, which is kind of interesting. But yes, those, uh, those are my thoughts on each of the Alchem uh, alchemist class and their archetypes. Um, if there's anything I missed, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Also, feel free to let me know how you feel about the classes themselves. Just keep things civil and we'll get along just fine. And if there's any class you want me to go over, because otherwise I'm going to be doing these in alphabetical order with the Adept and its four related classes, probably done mm, closer to the end. Um, just let me know, and I will get on those. But yes, that has been my archetypes guide. Uh, nothing super detailed, just take for it what you will. Just some ideas for if you want to play the game again and are looking for a different class pick, or whatever. But in any case, thank you guys so much for watching, and I do hope to see you in the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves, and I wish you interesting adventures. Farewell. <laughs>